there again. This is Mike, your um, DVD and Blu-ray physical media uh, film review with some more new movies that I got. Let's see here. It is. Yes, the D, the Blu-ray combinations, uh, uh, 4K uh, remastering of White Christmas. And um, this was a recent Paramount restoration, and uh, it's a 70, 70th anniversary, and, um, and it comes with a regular front box cover, and uh, yes, in a plastic bag, in a plastic cover front. Let's open this up and let's see what it looks like. Okay, then, yep, yeah. and, um, and, uh, let's open it up. Yes, it, it, um, has the, um, the, the 4K and the Blu-ray version, if you can see it. And, uh, let's open it, see if it has another, oh, no, it doesn't have a front cover. Doesn't have an exchange front. Okay, now uh, let's read about it. I and um, um, let's read it. And uh, let's say. And I want to tell you something. I remember I got it back in two. I got the DVD version way back in. I think it was in 1994. Or 2004, I don't know, I got the DVD, DVD version, and every year I would play that. And, um, and I'm wondering if this includes the interview with uh, Rosemary Clooney, because that's very, very important, because she told the history about it. And, uh, well, let's read it now. Um, this Technicolor Paramount Classic. Is first to be released in Vista Vision, teaming Bing Crosby and Danny Kaye as a two song and dance war veterans who become one of the hottest acts in show business when they, when they encounter a sister act, Rosemary Clooney Vera Ellen, and they're off to Vermont to a holiday celebration unlike others, directed by Michael Curtiz, Casablanca, and Under a Texas Moon, uh, and featuring timeless songs by Irving Berlin, and it is essential and essential and festive festive favorites okay special features let's see a commentary by rosemary clooney okay white christmas sing-along classic holiday moments uh assignment children's special 1954 uh documentary feature uh, uh, uh unicef document feature their, their first goodwill ambassador danny k Introduction by Michael uh, Bubbles. Backstage stories from White Christmas. Oh, that might be the old Rosemary Clooney interview. Uh, Bing Crosby, uh, Christmas cr crooner, Danny Kay, Joy to the World. What? Ah, oh, they got some Christmas songs here. Uh, Irving Berlin's White Christmas, Rosemary Clooney's Old Kentucky Home. They got some more music of uh, Rosemary Clooney, Old Kentucky Home, uh, White Christmas from page to page, White Christmas, a look back with Rosemary Clooney, oh goody, they got the old thing. I might just, uh, I just probably might keep the DVD as a backup. So, I will talk to you about it as soon as I finish uh, viewing it today. Well, hello. well, how do you do again? I'm back from uh, uh, seeing this new uh, restoration of White Christmas, and how do I feel about it? Well, it was pretty good. The uh, print was just as good as the old DVD version. I mean, there was, I mean, except it was a bit sharper. Now, I don't have a, a 4K player. I played the old, uh, I played the Blu-ray. It was a pretty good print. 
but it had extra menus. Besides having the uh, Rosemary Clooney discussion of White Christmas, it had extras. For example, it had excerpts from Danny Kate and Bing Crosby uh, uh, Christmas specials. And uh, one of them was a Boublier, uh, that, that pop singer Boublier um, uh, special in 2012, which he showed an old TV set and showed it, had a videotape of Bing Crosby 1971 Christmas special singing White Christmas. And somehow the technicians managed to insert them in the 1971 videotape and managed to manipulate the old image to 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 respond to him, and he they he, they both sang White Christmas together, and, and it and it made you wonder uh, how they did that. And also, uh, it included a short called Assignment to Children, which was actually produced at Paramount. When Danny Kay was hired in 1954 to, to work with UNICEF to entertain the kids while in, in, around the world in poverty countries, uh, and while helping their, while UNICEF would help those kids uh, in, in food, in vaccinations, and, and, and in health, and in health, and um, I've, I've seen White Christmas so many times, but in that Mandy sequence. I, I, know, I don't know why I never noticed it before, but right behind Vera Ellen, I also, all of a sudden I find a notice that George Chakiris, who was in the Rosemary Clooney dance, uh, song number, was actually in that number too, right behind her. And that was the first time, first time uh, that I ever s seen him. I mean, he was in the other version. That's the first time I ever noticed him. So, um, and you had other uh, extras like uh, the Broadway version of White Christmas. Uh, they were talking about that they had to change it to make a successful Broadway musical conversion because many times a Broadway musical converted to a film doesn't work in a movie bombs. Well, um, although I did like Camelot, I don't know why it didn't do too well. But anyway, um, it's the same thing with a musical and the and film converting to a Broadway. They had to change it. First of all, they had to make more song, add more songs to it. And uh, secondly, uh, they had to make where the two characters originally played by Bing Crosby and Danny Kaye were already successful singers during World War II. They had to make it that way. And fortunately, uh, it became a big hit for that Christmas season. It didn't bomb. It didn't bomb. And, um, and then there's a, a, a segment about Rosemary Clooney's favorite house that she would go to and rest. It was near the river, close to where she and her sister and her brother were born. And her, it included her niece. She talked about her and, and all. And, and, um, um, which, was, which was pretty good. And I want to say that unlike the DVD version, White, this version of White Christmas just had more menus, had more information on it, and uh, I never got the 2011. I had the DVD version that was 2000. I got it in 2000, and this is this is the upgrade version. I never got the 211 version, but I want to say that the print was just as good as the DVD version. I didn't see any problem. But fortunately, uh, the restoration, they checked a lot of things and made sure it was just as good. And uh, another thing, in the, uh, in the uh, podcast, Perf Damage, also on YouTube visually, uh, the restoration department woman, I keep forgetting her name, uh, talked about how everybody kept asking for the perspective, stereo soundtracks to be put on these home video things. And she said they're available, but you have to talk to Paramount about that. 
But here's probably the reason why they don't put those per per perspective soundtracks. You might find them disappointing. For example, if the sound goes left, it'll go left. If the sound goes right, it goes right. But when the background music and songs come in, the whole sound becomes mono. The whole sound becomes mono. It's not perfect stereo. It's simulated stereo taken from one optical track. And on the basis that it's good to hear sounds on the left and sounds on the right, but till, till the music or songs come in, that it becomes mono, that's probably the reason why they didn't add added the perf tracks, because per perspective, perspective sound ain't all that good. Now they have, they claim that they had that in stereo, but it was probably um, uh, the song numbers maybe if coming from three channel sound. Well, it did sound like, it sounds stereo-ish, but not three channel sound like, uh, what's the name of that picture? Uh, Vertigo. Vertigo had three channel soundtrack. The Ten Commandments had three channel soundtrack, and or four channel soundtrack and uh, played in the theaters that had that. But White Christmas had simulated stereo and it was recorded monorail. So that's probably why they didn't add the um, uh, perspective, perspective soundtracks because they're just not that great and people would find it disappointing unless you can digitally tweak the perspective sound tracks, but they'd never be changing its history. Well, anyway, um, I hope you like my review of White Christmas. This was a great, good transfer, and um, and it was it was pretty good. But what's ma was amazing was all the extras, all the extras. Danny K. Short going uh, entertaining kids in poverty areas uh, while UNICEF was helping them to get their shots and give them food and give them milk. And I think, I think uh, Danny Kay wasn't exploiting this for his career. I think he was sincere about this, and I think he paid to go to, to take those trips. I don't think he got paid for it, which, which pretty, um, which really means that he was, he's always been sincere about helping poor kids. Well, it, like I said before, I hope you liked his review, and um, I'll talk to you later in a Bye.